Hello and welcome back. This is the Yarn Spider. Welcome to my channel, everybody. So, as you can see, um, I have my beautiful tablecloth. This is a vintage tablecloth. And I thought that this is a really good background to film on. That's why I have this background. And I have my trusty tripod and my phone. I have tried to make this video a couple times already and I just went to grab something and the whole phone fell. So I have to refilm again. And that's okay because that's what happens when we make mistakes. So I'm going to try this again, y'all. So if you're wondering what and this stuff is, these are just uh, games. So let me put you guys down. There we go. I'm just going to just, just move a little bit out of the way. Okay. All right. Okay, there we go. So, now this is an introduction. This is the first video. This is a supply video, just for supplies. That way you guys understand what supplies you actually need. Um, I have quite a plethora of stuff. <laughs> and I'm just going to show what I have, but only what you need. So, here we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about, scissors, and um, I'm gonna talk about scissors here. So, we have little ones. I highly suggest um, when you start out that you get um, some little ones because um, the little ones that are sharp. So I got these at Walmart. These I don't remember where I got. I've had them forever and they're wonderful. They cut very nicely um, and I just really like them. So these two I got at Walmart. These are Cheapy Cheapy Westcott and Craft Smart. So those are from Walmart. Um, and I believe these are from Michaels, excuse me, because Crestmart I think is Michaels, if I'm correct. But it's a must that if you get scissors that you get a small pair. Um, I highly recommend having at least two sharp scissors and what you call travel scissors. So these are very cool. And what you do is these open up. Um, these come, if you get a kit um normally of crochet hooks they have these or they have these separate in the supply section they have them in michael's hobby lobby is quite pricey ac more joann's but michael's is what i mostly go to i live in florida so michael's and hobby lobby is close to me but i don't go ahead a lot hobby lobby because it is i love hobby lobby but it is very pricey um but Hobby Lobby is wonderful. They have great brands. And I suggest, you know, if you want to get some nice yarn and you want to venture out into different textures and things of that nature, that take a trip to Hobby Lobby. See if you like it. Um, the yarn is phenomenal. I highly recommend it. I think it's one. And um, just in my personal opinion, everybody has their own opinions. I think that Hobby Lobby yarn is the best yarn on the market. Um, and then you have your other yarns. You have Joann's Fabric and Crafts. You have AC Moore. Um, AC Moore is not in, I don't think, every state in the United States. Um, but with Florida, because it is a travel destination, Walt Disney World, um, things like that, that a lot of people come here. So if I was to go Joann's, Joann's is about an hour and a half for me. So... That's what I'm saying. I live far out from places. I kind of live in the boonies. So <laughs> that's where I live. And I love this hobby. So these are really cool. These are travel scissors. I highly recommend these just because of the fact if you are knitting on a bus, on a plane, in a car, um, on a train, bus, train, plane, car, I think those are all the, in a truck, I, I don't know, whatever has four wheels or whatever amount of wheels and you're able to sit and do something um i highly recommend you get these because these do fold themselves in and if you are reaching in for your project you are not going to stab yourself so be weary of getting sharp scissors you just don't want to poke yourself um i recommend that you just have a variety of scissors um but i recommend sharp 
because when you use certain yarns, so if you use a yarn like this, um, I got this, um, somebody bought me some yarn from the thrift store, so with this, as you can see, which I don't like the tape, excuse me, sorry guys, I don't like the tape on here, this, um, so, somebody, somebody always, when they go shopping, they sometimes, um, gift me yarn or stuff like that because I'm always making stuff to, for pregnancy centers, donating at hospitals, things like that, or homeless or things like that. Um, so this is from a thrift store, I think I bought this one for, I think I bought this from a thrift store down the road for me, so of course, once I use this stuff, it's washed and things like that, but the reason I say sharp scissors is because if you have yarn like this and this, um, as you can see, it's very, what's called pilling, um, and when you have pilling yarn, if you do not have a sharp scissor, it's going, you're going to be like snipping it, snipping it, and it's going to shed and shred, and you're going to have fibers everywhere. So I'm just saying, and I will show you guys, um, this yarn, I don't know what yarn this is, so I do apologize. The other one I just shown is ice yarns, and I got that from somebody, um, somebody's always gifting me yarn and people are always blessing me and things like that. So I have people from everywhere, you know, because I have my own patterns for bonnets and afghans and all that stuff. And that will come later. I will be glad to share these patterns, um, my own creations. There is a knitted baby afghan, um, that I'm working on that is my own design. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's beautiful. And it is using Karen one pound and pat um they're like vintage pastel rainbow colors. It's very pretty and the yarn is phenomenal to work with. It's very soft and I really like it. It's kind of like got cotton durability and the feel to it, but it's absolutely phenomenal. And uh Karen one pound I believe is sold in Michaels. They still sell the color. And when I show you guys the blanket, you'll see what color it is. And if you go to Michael's, you know the color. I don't think I have the label anymore to the Karen One Pound. Because when I moved, um, my moving company lost my entire stash of yarn, guys. Yes, and I prayed about it for years. And God was amazing enough that I was able to replenish my whole... My whole stash of yarn and what I have now, you know, I just add to it little by little. I go to sales, I go to thrift stores, and I just buy yarn. And then I like, I love making afghans. Afghans are just great. Um, these are old. I don't know where I got these from. I just have them. But as you can see, they're old. Um, I do not use these um, because as you can see, it's very, it's not sharp enough. And it will shred the yarn and it just won't look nice so I will show you guys um like I said so when you have scissors that do not cut if you can see it's shredding as you can see and if you take these ones and I'll show you if you take these ones hold on there you go and you don't have shredding and it's nice so that is just the only difference of having some good quality sharp scissors and I hope that helps. Um, these I will probably, I don't know, I'll just keep them, um, but I'll give them to somebody or see if I can just throw them out. But yeah, you got a lot of pilling and stuff. So you have your travel scissors and all of these and I'm going to put this back in my pouch. Um, the pouch that I keep all my supplies in is this, and it's got a zipper on it. Um, somebody um, was getting rid of a lot of stuff, and I believe that this bag is a, like, it's a, it's when you have a baby, and you get one of those baby kits with the sucker and the hairbrush, the comb, things like that. And uh, that's what that is 
from. Now, um, I'm going to now show you guys this. Okay. So, this has saved my life. Okay. And I'm going to show you all why. So, I have this here. These big needles here. Okay. And these are called darning needles. And you put the you put the yarn through and you sew in your ends. That's what these are for. And I also have these because these are really phenomenal. Very good. I got these at Michael's. These were like two or three and change just for these two, which is a little pricey, but you don't want the plastic needles guys you need to do away these are like they're they're the good quality plastic ones because i have a set of plas plastic you know i had a bunch that came with stretch markers on these and i'll say what these are for in a second but it came with that set so I have these, and the reason I like these is because this curve on the end, I like, because when you're sewing into your, um, you're sewing in your ends, you need to go through, I go through threads, and I do it like, uh, four to six times with sewing in the ends, and I make sure that it's well sewn, that you can't see the ends, and I tend these days to do a lot of projects where you crochet the ends in because sewing in ends is an absolute nightmare in knitting. So, yeah. Okay, so I think that, you know, if you're going to invest, you really need to invest in uh, your good darning needles. You can get a pack of these for probably one or two bucks and these will last you forever. They're really not they're indestructible like these I don't use unless it's chunky yarn but as you can see that's why you don't really use these too much I use these on chunky yarns I don't use these on if I was to use red heart I don't use these um, because they're too big for smaller projects so you want to get these so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my needle threader here and I got this needle threader at Walmart for I think it was a dollar twenty-five, but you get this at Walmart. This is what it's called, a needle threader. That's what it looks like. And as you can see, it is Walmart brand. But y'all, the boy brand is very good for supplies. Um this is a boy brand. These are stitch markers, and I'll get to these in a second. So I have my needle threader here, and you guys are probably like, what is this? So when you go to pull the yarn through, okay, guys, let me get, now I'm using a neon orange right now. I'm going to bring on the camera, so be prepared because this is insanely bright and I don't know the color. I don't, I can tell you all the color of this yarn. If you are interested, I'm going to tell you all the color anyway, because of the fact that it's always good to know colors of yarn, guys. Okay. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some out. I do apologize, guys. Just give me a second. And we're just going to pull some out. Okay. So, like I said, this is a very, very bright yarn. And I think that with the background, it goes well. So, you have your yarn here. This is Red Heart. Um, that's what this is called. Red Heart. I got this. I don't know where I got this. It's old. I do apologize, guys. So, here we go. This is the color. This is a vintage uh, Red Heart. As you can see, they make the labels differently, but you have all your stuff. And I will talk about weights of yarns and, and things of that nature. Um, washing instructions and what it tells you and what all this whole label is about everything on here um, because it needs to be broken down uh, with knitting um, I have sensory issues so I love you know lots of yarn I love to feel yarn touch yarn and look at it the colors I love vibrant colors so yeah and then 
what I like about Red Heart is that there is no dye lot, which is absolutely wonderful. What a dye lot is, is when they make a certain amount of yarn stock and then they make a whole nother amount of yarn stock and each one has a dye lot. So you'll find that in, for example, Red Heart um, Mistletoe Yarn. That's a one particularly I did in Afghan and... Normally, I'm like, okay, no dye lot, but that is for the solid colors. So, when you have variegated, which is multicolor yarn, which I will talk about on another video, those have more tend to have more dye lots. Dye lots are just if the yarn comes out a little darker, comes out a little lighter, comes out spotty. There's color things. We It's just weird. So, I'll get into that on another video. But anyway, so that's what this yarn is. I just wanted to show everybody the color and you see, you know, the whole thing here. And this is here because I got it at a thrift store for a dollar, the whole thing. Um, I grabbed it. I did a table runner, but that's crochet. So I can't show you all that because this is a knitting channel. So, um, if you guys are into crochet, I, don't want to do the crochet videos because there's too many and I really want to focus on knitting. That's why this is a knitting channel only. So maybe later on down the line, maybe a year or depending on where the channel goes, um, I will incorporate crochet. So yeah. Okay. Anyway, enough with the label. So here I have this yarn and what you do is, and this is why I say this has saved me guys. And I mean saved me. So this is going to go into here, right into here, and you can see it goes in. And what you do is you wrap the yarn around, I'm sorry, and it literally pulls it through. There you go. And I tend to leave it like this when I sew. That way, you always, when you sew, you want to leave at least, I want to say a six inch tail because you're going to sew this in and then you're going to have this and all that stuff but so you see how instantly that pulled it through what happens when you don't use this is you're going to sit here okay and then a lot of people have this issue so what i do is i'll fold it over and it's incredibly difficult as you can see it's incredibly difficult to get on here and it's hard to do it in the camera but what I do is I press it up and then I try to bring it through the needle and it's just it's very very difficult so because and you see how it now shreds the yarn so you see how it's shredding and becoming a mess and just annoying so needle threader this is I think a dollar twenty between a dollar twenty five and a dollar forty five at Walmart. Please invest in one because it will save your fingers. Because after all that knitting all day, sweaters and afghans and you know whatever you all like in knitting, um, it's gonna save you. So I like these. Oops, sorry guys, it's a little hard to see past my tripod here. Oop, oop, there we go. Okay. So now we have that, and I'm going to move out of the way the needles. I'm going to take those, and I tend to, when I store stuff, guys, when I store stuff, and I'll show you about this in a second, and I'm going to move that. So I tend to, when I store stuff, have on hand these, and I clean these, and all that stuff and I keep my, all my needles in there and I also keep smaller spools of thread um, this is good to have when you do knitting you want to sew buttons on or you need to sew pieces together depending on what your pattern calls for um, this particular thread is just basic sewing thread um, I'm not a fan of this because um, it just I like polyester thread, but I am out of polyester thread, and um, it's going to be a while before I buy some. So when I buy some, I will bring that on a video and show you guys um, what I buy. And, of course, I have my big old needle, and I keep that organized. Now, 
I'm going to show you guys and these needles. I'm going to do the needles in a second, so I do apologize, guys. Okay, so now, okay, we're going to talk about. I'm going to put a hold this up for a second. I'm going to talk about cable needles. This is a lot of fun to talk about. Um, this is phenomenal, but you have your two different types of cabling needles. So a lot of these times it comes in a three set if you get stitch markers. You know, on Amazon, you'll get these China from China or wherever it's shipped from, things like that. So I have, these are called straight. These are called straight cabling needles and these are called horseshoe cabling needles, I believe. I think they're called horseshoe. Um, it's been so long since I looked up the terms, but you have these and I tend to think when you are cabling, which cabling will be shown in another video, but I tend to think when you do cabling that these are better because when you are knitting, these tend to be more heavy and weighted. Um, and as you can see, there's different sizes. So, of course, you have your thinner yarns, your medium, like your worsted weights, acrylics, and then you have your chunky, which is like number five and up. And then you have your, um, I want to say, like you have your yarn weights from super fine to about a three, and then... If you're doing a bigger three, like you're doubling up, then you want to do this and four worst of weight up to chunky, you know, a, a thinner chunky. And then you've got your bigger chunky and so, so on and so forth. So these I can open. I'm going to cut these open because I want to show you guys. I'm sorry, I'm only going to move this stuff out of the way. So let me bring you guys over here. Um, I'm just going to cut open these cabling needles, cabling needles, and therefore you have what's called straights. These are horseshoes, I believe. But as you can see, you have, you know, for your finer weights, you have these. Um, if you do cabling, you can also use these and these are called dpns which stand for double pointed knitting needles these are vintage so if you do not notice the uh packaging that's because this is vintage so you have your dpns um double pointed knitting needles or double pointed needles excuse me so I do apologize, my bird is going to make noise and attack his toy at the wrong moment. So, excuse me, guys, I do apologize. Okay, so, now, now that we have our, you know, you know, our straights and our horseshoe, um, you know, and we just have these... So I'll back up. You guys can see. So there we go. And this would be like you have your big, medium, and small cabling needles. So that's that in a nutshell for the cabling needles. And these cabling needles um, are not expensive. Um, I got this. These are the walmart brand of course boy trusty boy and as you can see in here this is cabling that's what it looks like and there's different kinds of cabling you have your you know you, if you learn cabling you could do scarves hats beanies bonnets booties sweaters afghans you name it you could cable it you know, once you learn how to cable, you get comfortable. It's a strange feeling. Um, I still don't do a lot of cabling myself because I'm not a fan of it. Um, but if you guys want to learn, um, I will 
pick up a video one day and make a video on cabling and I will show you guys again you know anytime I do a video this is just a supply video but anytime I do a video I will gladly show you the this all the supplies where to get them and I'll tell you in the video where to get them so people don't have to look down in the description um it's just easier for me to tell you guys and if you guys have any questions comments on this video please comment down below please like please subscribe if you're watching this and comments because if I'm not doing a video good enough and I'm having issues then or I'm you know not giving a good enough teaching lesson let me know and I will redo the video and I will do the whole thing again um you know I can't do it perfectly but I can do the video again that will be a little bit better a little detailed explanation so so far I hope I'm doing a good job um I am going to cut this video at 30 minutes I want it I want the video to be more than 30 minutes because it's just a supply video on supplies only so I'm trying to get through this video quickly I do apologize guys and I'm trying my hardest to get through this video quickly okay next we're going to talk about um, measurements whoops excuse me so we're gonna talk about measuring okay so as you can see here we have what's called a knitting gauge and guys like I said before I'm sorry about my bird if you hear um, clicking noises or tapping noises that is my bird he just doesn't like to sleep and he needs to be covered soon so I apologize okay so here you have your knitting gauge and on here it comes with um, rulers on the sides so you have your inches and you have what's called your centimeters sorry guys and then here your needles go from smallest all the way to biggest so here it's going to tell you the u.s sizes here and then this is going to tell you the sizes for excuse me the sizes i gotta back up the sizes for the needles so excuse me about slowing down it's a lot to think and talk so i apologize guys and then i have this tape measure i got this from dollar tree i love this tape measure and it's a phenomenal tape measure it's incredible and i have measured this up i have put this up to actual measurements and it is correct so i got this at dollar tree in a kit and i really love this because this was quite far now the reason gauges and all these rulers and of course this snaps back and then on the back you have your centimeters so you have your inches and your centimeters thank you guys yeah i know i was right on that so it's got a little keychain but these are really good to have to pull out if you're doing sweaters garments socks um hats yes so the only time you need a gauge is for garments so you're talking about sweaters gloves hats so socks mittens um baby items um stuff like that i tend to not do gauge so much on afghans unless it's a particular afghan and it's a very fancy pattern and there's a lot of needlework and cabling work and things like that done into the pattern um, otherwise I kind of tend to do my own thing um, and make my own designs because of copyright issues and also because that person has created that and I like to be my own person and you know have my own patterns and I like to have my own patterns that are incredibly simple but are incredibly gorgeous to look at so this goes up to three feet and this is a smaller one and the reason I have this is because this is straight like it's hard so when i'm doing an afghan and i need to measure it for a twin twin extra large full queen king and california king sizes or throws um baby blankets things like that this is good to, when you lay it on the floor and you need to um 
block your work and blocking i will talk about in another video blocking is when you steam a garment to make sure it's at its full fullest size or fullest length with depending on whatever you are doing but the reason for this is to measure my afghans um i tend because i've been knitting for so long that i know um all about like baby blanket sizes i do a lot of layout sets i have my own patterns for sweaters and bonnets of that nature so if you guys are interested um i will get on in another video and i will show you guys the absolutely stunning afghan i'm working on i want to wait till it's finished and then once it's finished i plan on in the future trying to make my own pattern book um for beginners because I like to really explain things and teach things so everybody knows and they can enjoy this hobby and not get stressed out when they're trying to do a cast on and there's five different types of cast on. There might be more than that now because it's been around so long, um, but I've been doing knitting forever and I learned um, a little history. I learned about knitting from when I was in high school from a friend of mine's mom because I struggle with, you know, some some health issues and I really think it's therapeutic to knit so it helped it's my outlet it's my outlet of creativity and I absolutely love knitting so <laughs> that's me so these are the rulers and with what's called a knitting gauge and what a gauge is is a swatch so it's like a square so if I was to take a if I was to make this size scarf I would know I would have to know how many stitches across and then how many rows I need to do to get that gauge and what a gauge is is it measures the needle size of your project so it tells you if you knit too loosely or too big so if you're doing a baby sweater and you're doing what's called a raglan sweater which is from the neck down and everything is in one piece you don't have to just make the separate pieces and sew it all together um you must do your gauge because with babies babies grow and you definitely want to have the correct size so if you're doing a gauge and it calls for say you're doing you need a swatch um to be you know 10 rows and 10 rows up and then it needs to measure like you know 20 stitches across and it has to be a square that's you know there's got to be 20 stitches across and then it's got you got to make it all the way up to four inches and the swatch specifically has to end at four stitch it um at four inches and if you're if you're using you know say you're using um say you're using like this size needle um then if you 